I'll plug in the cable and that should be good until they have a storm or something. Okay, we're going to install a uh, backup generator for my mom. Uh, the guys quoted $6,000. Um, that was with the generator and everything. Uh, where you can do it with a pretty good generator. Same hundred, same wattage, just an off-brand. Uh, for Well, so far we're at $1,300. We've already got the gas line ran for the propane from our propane tank. Um, we just got to bury it now. And we'll be good for that. And got it uh, a riser for two foot up there. Um, so she'll be using the propane for this. Um, this is her breaker box and we're going to use the cheap version which is the interlock system and because um, all they're going to run is the oxygen uh, generator they have and you know refrigerators mostly um, probably the air conditioner or the heater depending on when it is since they're um, in Oklahoma it does get colder um, anyway where is that oh here it is so it's pretty easy install um, you know just read up a little bit first but basically you have to buy one of these um, for the brand of sub panel you have and when it gets uh, when you install I'll have to move this breaker though this one's for this outlet someone put in here um, I'll have to move it down so that we can fit the generator breaker and then we will install the uh, access you know the generator hook up here basically just as a 50 amp cord from your generator to the twist lock here um, I'll just put that on the post behind it and then I'll move this breaker down and install the new um, 50 amp breaker for the generator system there and after that it will power that um, and then you just put this on here so put this on here to lock out um, basically it's designed that you know you can't flip this up with the main breaker on and without that flipped up you can't flip on the breaker that's in that spot so I'll show you that's when it's installed. Um, you basically can have one or the other on only at once. So, um, and that's designed so that you don't feed back into the, the system when you get your generator on. So I've already got screws out, of course. Just pull your panel off carefully. Is it getting caught on here? And I know I should have this electricity off, um, but since he's on oxygen in there, I don't want to turn it off till I just have to. Um, so once I get everything else installed, I just wanted to get these on here to get the panel on, get the alignment for the wire right, and then I'll shut it off and attach that. Alright, so I'm pausing right here because I had some uh, camera issues, and I'll just kind of walk you through real quick. Um, it actually jumps to me being finished and doing a walkthrough because I didn't realize it until I was pretty much done and had the cover back on. Now, mind you, doing this in the summertime would be a lot better. It was only like 20, 25 degrees or something, so flexible conduit and 8 gauge wire, not very flexible. Um, but yeah, just um, using these uh, watertight compression style fittings, uh, that way you don't have to use any glue and then just went out the bottom and around to that back pole. You'll see where I put the inlet box in a minute. And um, you know, those inlet boxes you buy, they, they have a knockouts on them just like any other box and you just uh, run your wire through the conduit, put another one on that inlet box, hook up the plug in the inlet box, and then you, you know, come back on this side and hook up everything to the breaker and the uh, bars. Then you close it on up. You didn't miss much. It just was a little bit of a chore since it was so cold and uh, the stuff wasn't flexible. I didn't buy, I should have bought another extra foot and a half or so of wire, but I didn't. And Common problems, right? So 
That's why the electricians get paid more because they know exactly what to do. <laughs> so it takes a little bit of time, but I, I got it done. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out was going back to the, the main box here. Um, if you notice these four, um, I don't know, knockouts, uh, placements, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're actually perfectly lined up for the lockout panel. All you have to do is drill those out with the appropriate size bit. I think it was five thirty seconds it said or three sixteenths, I don't remember. Um just read on your, your instructions. We didn't read the instructions and you actually go from the back side and screw it into the plate, um, probably to make it where it's kind of tamper uh, resistant from this side. We just used some bolts so they actually have a nut on the back side um, and you can't get it off if you without taking the panel apart. So, But anyway, that's why you buy the brand specific. It has to do with the alignment of the main breaker to the first breaker in your panel and then it also has to do with the size and placements so you know the Eaton brand actually I guess is designed and it already has the little holes for placement so that was good and um, it was pretty simple to install so sorry about the video but um, I'll hit play again here and you'll see the rest and kind of the walkthrough of how the whole setup works so we got it all finished um, we've got the um, gas line uh, ran of course I told you that um, we're just gonna have to order a uh, an adapter to go to a propane tank type connector because that's what's on the generator um, we've got our inlet box in here installed right here um, so what they'll do is they'll get the cable cables on order with the generator um, it plugs into your 50 amp on the generator and then there's a twist lock that plugs into here and then I just ran conduit and the 8 gauge wire down and up through into here and then we put a new a new breaker, 50 amp breaker, because that's what we'll be running um, to feed the panel. And then this is the interlock that we were talking about. So you can't you can't flip this breaker on, right, until this one is off, which is your main breaker, so it doesn't go back up into the the grid or whatever, I guess. So, and then in order to turn this one um, back, uh, yeah, turn this one back on, you'd have to flip this one off, let this fall down, and then you can flip this one back on. So that's the way it never energizes um, beyond your box. And this is probably the easiest and the cheapest way to install them without doing one of those other panels. And then you just control your power in the house. Don't flip on your microwave when the dryer's running or don't turn on all the lights in the house. So just, you know, be aware. Run the things you need to only. And um, there's uh, the reason I like this better is there's no picking and choosing and flipping breakers. You just come out here and flip these, and then your refrigerators and freezers are back on. So, also she has <clears throat> some refrigerators out in the shop, so it'll feed the shop from here, and that'll be the only thing on in there. Um, there's only like five outlets in the shop anyway, and so it's uh, it'll feed the shop and turn those freezers and refrigerator back on as well, and she'll be all set here. So. Just got to get the generator in. Uh, we won't be here, so hopefully she can figure that out. And we're going to put it right here in this spot. And then uh, plug in the cable. And that should be good until they have a storm or something. But yeah. These still, they're pretty proud of them. Even this whole setup right here still was about $100 bucks, um, for all the... Well, actually it was almost $200 because the this was like 70 And the inlet box is like 65 so um, that was even online prices uh, the local store was just as cheap um, you know 15 bucks for a breaker or whatever so um, still cost quite a bit but uh, easiest way